Okay. Uh, we uh, go straight to the point. We have uh, a title called Hoi, Hoi Tech. And uh, what Hoi means is uh, high order interpolation, uh, higher order interpolation. And uh, this will be combined with tech. And tech, of course, comes from the Greek uh, techne, which is uh, art, craft, and skill. So in that way, you could also uh, understand type as uh, tech. And it's important to understand the history of uh, the written word. Like in the beginning, we were writing with the tools, with a pen or a brush. And then uh, currently, we are like, uh, using type, which is uh, used like, uh, as typefaces. So we design typefaces. We, uh, they are like uh, typified forms. This is what a font is. But how the future will look like, we are not sure, because with uh, variable fonts, everything can change. And to understand that perhaps a bit better, we could also look at uh, society, how this uh, developed the last uh, years. So in the beginning, thousands of years ago, when people were still writing with a pen, I think it was a, a highly uh, personal world. And this, I think, changed dramatically with the invention of Gutenberg because then it changed to this uh, rational society which is based on uh, knowledge and which is based on the printed books, what we know. But how the future looks like... Yeah, we don't know yet. <clears throat> Only thing we can know is that it's going to be variable. So in that way, I think it's important to look at this change, what happened with, uh, when fonts become dynamic. And because probably the change is uh, much bigger than we can uh, perceive or understand uh, at the moment. Because as long as fonts were static, then what we actually designed were uh, contours, and those contours defined the letters. But at the moment, when we work with uh, dynamic fonts, then it's probably not this contour what we uh, design anymore, but perhaps it's much more this relation of these different contours. And that's perhaps the, the, the core of, uh, of the design. And the whole design space. We have to have a control of the whole design space, not only like static forms inside a design space. So in that way, in the 20th century, our thinking when designing fonts were very much based on these uh, contours. And we believe that in the 21st century, this will uh, change into this new perception of interpolation. Because again, that's, I think, the core, what like, a variable font is, uh, is about. It's a font in time with dynamics. And therefore, the, those interpolations are very, very important. And yeah, you could question like why we are talking about interpolation. Is it really so important? And I think it really is because uh, yeah, right now the font editors are able to make a linear interpolation. But with Hoi, we are going to prove that actually what we really need is a curved interpolation, what we call as Hoi. So in that way, I think the, the problem of uh, the 20th century, in the beginning, like in the 1960s, when we first made the digital typefaces, was how can we make curves on the computer? And, you know, like today, it seems to be like totally uh, clear to us and logical to us, like, of course, we have the BCA curves. But we also have to remember that there was a development, there was a moment in the beginning when computer engineers said, like, yeah, we cannot make curves because the computer can only think in zeros and one, and so those are straight lines, and how can we make those curves? And in the same way, like, that it's totally natural for us today that we need the curves to design our contours, I think the challenge of right now is that we have to realize like how can we get our interpolations which are actually at the moment straight how can we get them into curves and there seems to be this kind of uh, wicked typographic problem within like uh, this interpolation of uh, of fonts because like 
of course, we use interpolation already like for the last 20 years also to uh, generate our static forms. And there the workflow works like that, that first you design your masters, then you do the interpolation, and quite often people have to fix it afterwards, and once the fonts are fixed, you will ship them. That's, I think, the, the normal uh, workflow for most people. So, like, if you have an eight-weight uh, uh, family, you have eight uh, static fonts, and you can still fix stuff. You can, op like, do some optical corrections for the counterforms or stuff like this. But with, when we go into a variable font workflow, we cannot fix those little details anymore. We just have to accept what is there. So the workflow actually for, for uh, variable fonts will be like first you design the font and then you ship it. <laughs> so there is no chance for uh, fixing, uh, fixing stuff. And this brings up this uh, kind of uh, wicked problem. And uh, Lucas de Groot, uh, he was uh, like writing and thinking and uh, talking about the interpolations for quite a while. And he talked about this uh, kind of wicked problem just a couple of months ago in uh, Berlin at uh, Typo Labs. And uh, we want to show like a short fragment of this uh, talk. Fonts are not always possible. I had to make this uh, stencil font for a customer last year and uh, I found a lot of letters with incredible interpolation problems. For instance, this K. We see that uh, in both masters, the lines are all uh, nicely parallel. But in the interpolated letter, it's awful, right? And it's unsolvable. And a lot of letters had this from because of the yeah, simple geometrics. Yeah, so it's really unsolvable. Like he says in the current font editors, there's no way to overcome this uh, trouble. You will always have this uh, distorted two points in a K. But at the same moment, it's very fascinating, it's like, what's, what's really going on? Like, where does it go wrong? Like, it's fascinating to try to understand the real problem behind it. So, on the one hand, Lucas said, like, it's impossible, so it's, there seems to be, like, this kind of uh, wicked uh, problem. But at the same way, perhaps it's just a matter of, like, uh, looking differently at, like, the situation. And once, like, we can look at it, and we can actually see the problem, then it's also possible, perhaps, to find the answer. So in that way, if you look at it, this K problem, it's like to keep those lines uh, parallel. And to understand it, we, we try to abstract it a little bit, this is a problem, so we only have like these two lines, and those are interpolated to these other two lines. And then when we uh, interpolate them with 50%, we get those four points. And when we connect them, we see that actually those four new interpolated four points are not on the line anymore, which seems to be strange. Like we expected that they should be on a line, but they are not. And again, it's still hard to understand what's really going, going on there and what's, what's the problem. So to, you know. Yeah, so actually, you see that there's points which should travel in different speeds. But in a linear interpolation, they, like every point is traveling on the same speed. And that's why you get uh, distorted. Uh, you, you don't any have more have this linear or uh, uh, good uh, shapes in between shapes. And yeah, to make it a bit more clear, we try to abstract it one step further. We just have three points on a line and so we interpolate those three, line, three points, and then uh, we get this. And then if we go halfway again, 50%, we get this. And then it's even more extreme, the mistake, because this white point is not on the line anymore. So where it should be is actually here on the right. That's how we want to have it. And it seems like a wicked problem. But again, you look at it, and you have to look like, how can you solve it? And once you look at it from a different perspective, once you drop this idea of these uh, straight lines, the solution is actually quite simple. What we have to do is that this point, which actually moves on the line also, this middle point, 
it should not travel on a straight line, but it should travel on a curve. And once it, it, it's interpolating, not on a straight line, but on a curve, we can solve the problem. So this is like uh, the original with the linear interpolation. We see that the white is not in, in, uh, in balance with the red dots, but once it's traveling on the curve, everything stays on the line. Do, do this one more time. So you see this line, which is straight there between three dots. So in that way, once you incorporate that in your interpolation, so once you make sure that these points are not interpolated on a straight line but on a curve, actually this is then this kind of interpolation cloud, it will show you that the problem is solved. And then again, once the problem is solved, it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> so basically there are no problems. <laughs> So, yeah, this is what we got with the linear interpolation. That's like, um, it's more obvious the problem when you want to rotate something. Sometimes the type designers, they want to re rotate something from the bowl to the light, and we never do that because we cannot achieve that. And that's actually what's actually happening here. If we want to rotate this form, it will, this will happen. It will not rotate, but because of linear interpolation, we get this kind of strange result. And then sometimes we try to fix this with, with uh, intermediate uh, masters, and then we have something which looks a little bit okay, but also still looks like not really okay, because still the points are not moving on the form, on the, on the curve. So if you want to rotate a form, it has to move on a curve, otherwise you cannot uh, rotate that. And that's like basically a limitation with which we like uh, somehow uh, learn to live along, but still, I think it's a, now a moment also to, to question these uh, limitations because of this missing moment where we can fix something. Yeah. And we, yeah. yeah, you could think that it doesn't make any sense for a, for a normal text typeface, but even like with a one axis wave uh, thing like Lucas had, there was this problem and it's solvable, solvable with this uh, tool. And another situation is if you, for example, want to bend something, then, you know, again, with uh, linear interpolation, there is no chance to get this done. But once uh, you use, like, uh, a non-linear interpolation, so higher order interpolation, an interpolation where the points move on a curve, everything can be uh, achieved. So, that's all. <laughs> we call it Hoy. So with Hoy, uh, the problem, what we had with like uh, uh, impossible uh, interpolations is solved because on the left you can see like a kind of hack where you try with the intermediate forms to make something get written, but still it looks very dull. You see the mistakes there? Yeah, so linear interpolation goes on there. And on the right, this is like a form which is interpolated with the help of this uh, uh, higher order interpolation. So on the right, that's a, a variable font uh, o, which is then interpolated with this uh, higher order interpolation. So this leads us to uh, make more uh, complex results. So if you want to write something, for example this, we can also do this in a total perfect way with this uh, uh, higher order interpolation. So things which we could not done in the past with the tools or the, 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 the strategies which we used uh, until now. So this is still... Uh it's text, it's, it's not like animation. It's not frame by frame thing, but it's a variable font and it's a working uh, uh, applied uh, generated font, what you see. Yeah, the same, yeah. Kind of uh, our dream from since 20 years, <laughs> and which is coming true now, which makes us very excited. And another example of the same thing, but a little bit more complex. Two glyphs saying Guangxi. This was made for, for branding agency Dungeon Channel in San Francisco. And of course, like 
sometimes people say, yeah, but how do you do that? Like, uh, it's, and it's, it's not possible to define it or to e explain everything in, in 20 minutes. But uh, so therefore what we want to do is actually, we want to show you for the first time a, a demo of a, of a whole typeface, a bellow, which is using this technique to get it like perfectly uh, animated. And uh, so that uh, uh, if you want to use it on a website or for, uh, uh, for films and so on, you can use this like to have it, have it really nicely written. Let me see. So, okay. so, so th this is generated font working in a browser with two sliders. So basically what you see is that it has like an endless resolution and there's like no no delay no delay and no everything frames, that's perfectly no uh, written so type something else type com right text yeah it's a dream com coming true <laughs> yeah cannot uh, be more happy than this so basically what you see is that perhaps it's even more beautiful written than if you would write it yourself with a pen and a paper. Okay. Can we go back? Yeah? Yeah, go on. Of course, um, some people will be like curious how to how to use this technique, and we were thinking about that uh, quite uh, a while for the last uh, couple of months. And then, when you think about the tools you are using to uh, to make fonts, um, there's always this discussion I think at the moment going on between uh, native and extension. So we were talking to some people and said, like, yeah, it would be the perfect uh, extension for uh, for a font editor. But I'm not sure about that uh, because if you look at it, like what is a font editor, then a font editor is more than that. Like this is just a simple, uh, the most simple font editor you can imagine. It just has a tool to select a point. But we learned like that this is not enough. We always have to use also like we have to have a tool to, uh, to move the points. Like that's like the inner logic of a, of, a, of a font editor. But I think in the future when we will do more uh, variable fonts, when we will like design those interpolations, then this tool I think is as logic as this tool, like a tool to, to define or design those uh, uh, higher order interpolations, those interpolations which uh, are using uh, curves. Yeah. Way, a way to connect the dots in a more sophisticated way inside the design space. Because at the end, I think what a font editor is will change in the future with, this, with variable fonts. Until now, it was a tool to design uh, outlines primarily, but in the future, it will be as much also a tool to design those uh, interpolations. And in that way, I believe that this uh, functionality should be really at the core of a font editor and not... Uh, uh, as an uh, extension. So, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, like a challenge for the font editor guys here in the audience. <laughs> Please come so, back to yeah. us. We hope that uh, Font Lab 7 will be like a hoy font editor. <laughs> and uh, Cliff 3, perhaps it will uh, support uh, this uh, interface to uh, make uh, uh, higher order interpolations. Or perhaps even a robot font uh, will come as a hoy editor. Yeah, there's another guy who can have a better closing words than us, so we can just yeah. press play here. Okay. Okay? Okay. <laughs> if I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards ten years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. 
Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. Thank you. Thank you.